Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. Today is our lesson number four. Day number four. It says day 3004. Three is to uh, three is to designate the fact that it is from third edition. We have already solved all the problems that appeared in the first edition and the second edition. The book that I'm holding in my hand is the first edition, and you will find that the problems that we do today in this video are the same problems today. The problems that we do today on day number 3004 are the exact same problems that appeared on day 17 through 20. If you are interested in watching the solutions to these problems at a much slower pace, watch, watch day, through seven, day 17 through 20 and you will see the same solutions, as I said, at a slower pace in much more detail. Here's the first problem. The problem number 4 on page number 128. Turn to page 128. It's important that you have the book in front of you. On page 128 we have a problem which says which of the following which of the following could be could be the unit digit of 57 raised to n 57 raised to n and by the way this problem as you can clearly see deals with the concept of deals with the concept of unit digit and if you want to practice more if you want to practice more problems dealing with the concept of unit digit on my channel you will find a series simply called basic math just type in basic math and you will find seven videos there day number 172 to 178 there are seven videos day 172, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78 there are seven videos, you don't have to watch all seven of them because the problems do get more difficult as you go higher up in the number. Watch at least the first two or three dealing with the concept of unit digit. And if you can if you can do all of those problems dealing with the unit digits, you can do any problems in the GRE that you will encounter where they will ask you what is the unit digit of, of a given quantity. It is their one of their favorite topics. It, it appears on a regular basis. Let's see what we can do here. We have 57 raised to n, and here are the answer choices. They give us they're very nice, they give us 10 answer choices. So here we go. A, B, C, D, E, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J. 0, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, 8, and 9. These are the unit digits. 57 raised to n, what could be the unit digit? Well, let's find out, shall we? Let's start with 57 raised to 1, which is very simple. 57 raised to 1, if n happens to be 1, it ends in a 7. So there is a first winner. But the problem with this, this type of questions is that if there are four correct answers, simply locating three of them is not enough. You must locate all four of them before you get any credit for that. Credit for, or if there are three, for three right answers and you end up marking four of them, then that's also wrong. They're looking for the exactly the correct answers that are, that, that are there. What happens if you take the 57 and multiply it by another 57? What you will have here is 57 raised to 2. But 57 raised to 2, 7 times 7 is 9. 7, 7, 7 is a 49. 7, 7 is a 49. 9, carry 4. And we could do it all out, but we don't have to do it. We are only interested in the unit digits. So what we find is that 57, 57 raised to 2 ends in a 9. Because 57 times 7, 7, 7 is a 9. 57 ends in a 9. So, so far we have a 7, then we have a 9. I'm keeping, I'm keeping inventory here for a reason. I'll tell you at the very end. Let's do one more time. Let's multiply by 57 one more time. And the product that we'll get here is going to be 57 raised to 3. What's going to be the unit digit of 57 raised to 3? Well, 9 7 to 63. 9 7 to 63. Again, we don't have to worry about what the actual quantity is. 9 7 to 63 it ends in a 3. 
Let's multiply one more time by 57. And this quantity will be 57 raised to 4. 3 7 is at 21. 1, carry 2, and we can continue here. There's some, uh, there is some quantity obviously, 57 raised to 4, and in a 1. That's all we are interested in. We just want to know the unit digit. 57 raised to 4 ends in a 1. And then what happens here, suppose? What is suppose what's going to happen if we want to multiply one more time by 57? As soon as you see a 1, as soon as you see a 1, that's your Q, that the cycle is going to repeat itself. Either you see a 1 or what you started out with. If it ends in a 7 or a 1, the cycle is going to repeat itself. Because what's going to happen if you multiply by 57 one more time? Well, it's going to, it's going to end in a 7. And then if you multiply by one more time, it's, it, they take the 7 multiplied by one more time, take the 7 multiplied multiply by 57 one more time, it's going to end in a 9, just like here. Multiply by 57 one more time, it's going to end in a 3. As soon as, you, as, you, as soon as we see 1, that's the end of the story. That's the end of the story. The cycle is going to keep repeating itself, and the cycle is this. The cycle is 7, 9, 3, 1. 7, 9, 3, 1. 7, 9, 3, 1. Forever, never, never. But we don't have to worry about any of that. The question here is, what could be the unit digit of a 57 raised to n? It doesn't matter what n is. There are only four possible answers, which are, which are 1, 3, 7, and 9. 1, 3, 7, and 9. That's it. As far as the book is concerned, we are done with the problem. Now I'm going to give you another problem. It's sort of saying which could be, it's sort of saying which could be, what if the question says which, which, which must be the unit digit of not 57 raised to n, but 57 raised to 57? Would you know the answer to that kind of question? What is the unit, what must be or what is the unit digit of 57 raised to 57? Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out, shall we? Here's what's going on. So if that's the question, then all the work that we have done so far, we still have to do all of that work. In a question like this, this is just act one. There are two parts to it. This is just the first part. Here's the second part. Once we establish, once we, once we establish that this is a cycle, seven, nine, three, one, seven, nine, three, one, the cycle has four parts to it. A cycle is made up of four parts. We have 57 here. So if you divide 57 by four, five has one four, seven comes down, and 17 has four fours. What this tells us is that if you have 57 times to 57, it will have 14 complete cycles. 14 complete cycles. Of course, because 14 times 4 is 56. But it's not, in other words, in other words, 57 raised to 56, 57 raised to 56, which has a 14 complete cycle, 57 raised to 56 will end in a 1, because cycle ends at 1. But we don't have 57 raised to 56, we have 57 raised to 57. So we have 14 complete cycle and then still one more to go. That one more, this is the end of the 14th cycle. This is the end of the 14th cycle. Uh, 14th cycle and the 15th cycle begins with 7. So our answer to this question is, which must be the unit digit of 57 raised to 57? The answer is 7. Answer to this question is 7. Let's erase all of this. These, these answers no longer belong here. The answer to this question is 7. What if they ask you, what do they ask you which must be the which must be the unit digit of what if they ask you which must be the unit digit of 43 raised to 43 or 17 raised to 17 or 36 raised to 36 or or 12 raised to 12? They're not going to ask you three digits, you understand? If you want to if you want to learn how to answer these questions quickly. If you want to learn how to answer this question quickly, then watch the very first video. As I said, day 3004, the problems that we're solving here, right here, those problems are already solved. And if you want to answer these questions, which I'm not going to do here, answer these questions on day number 7. Watch day 17. And on day 17, you will find the answers to something like this. Or if you like, you can also watch day 17 is first edition series. The second edition series the series of second edition you can watch day 258 which is 
which is when the problem appeared in the second edition. I have solved the problems from the first edition as well as the second edition. And this, right now we are working on the third edition. So if you want to do it in detail, what day 17 or day 258. Let's move on. On the next page, if we turn the page, on the next page, what page number we were on? On the next page, on page number 129, we are dealing with a question which is a silly question, it's a very simple question. We are on page 129. Uh, we are asked, we are told that a pen costs, pen costs 25 cents. We are, co we are told that marker costs 35 cents. What's the question is, what's the cost of 18 pens and 100 markers. As I said, it's a very simple, very silly question. Well, 100 markers is very straightforward. 100 markers is very straightforward because they're told, they're told that it costs 35 cents. 100 markers times 35 cents is just going to be $35. It's just going to be $35 even. What about 18 pence? Well, we have 18 pence and they all cost 25 cents each. Let's multiply 18 by 25. 25, 8. 8, 8, 25 is at 200. 8, 25 is at 200. 0, carry 20. 25, 1 is at 21. At 25 or 125 is at 25. 25 plus 20 is 45. And of course, we have to st stick our decimal point because this, no, this was not the price. 18, its price is not 18 cents. I was pointing the wrong thing. Price is 25 cents. So written in terms of dollars, it's here. Now it's in terms of dollar. We have to put a dollar decimal point here. It's four dollars and fifty cents. So the total cost is thirty-five dollars for the markers and four dollars and fifty cents for the pen for a grand total of thirty-nine dollars and fifty cents. Thirty-nine dollars and fifty cents. Let's do one more. That is on page number, that was rather, on page number 129, we move on to page 30, page 130. On page 130, problem number 2, we have a rectangle which we are told has a length of 30 and a width of 10. We have a square with a side of 5. This is also a silly question, it's too simple. We are asked to find the perimeter, we, rather we are asked to find the ratio of the perimeter, perimeter of the square to the perimeter of, a, of the rectangle. Now this is a very simple question. This is a very simple question and the vast majority of the people who will get it wrong, there are some people who are going to get it wrong, but vast majority of the people who get this kind of question wrong, not this particular question, but this kind of questions, questions that are so simple, is because they get too cocky, they get too arrogant, and they stop paying attention, and they start doing silly things. I almost picked the wrong answer because I wasn't paying attention. And instead of taking the ratio of perimeter of a square to the perimeter of a rectangle, I did the reciprocal of it. I put the rectangle on the top. I thought they were looking for the perimeter of a rectangle to the perimeter of a square. It is the perimeter of a square to the perimeter of a rectangle. The perimeter of the square is very simple. Each side is 5. It's a square. So then just 5 times 4. Again, that's just too silly. I shouldn't have to do this thing. And here, we have a rectangle. The length is 30. The width is, width is 10. So we have two lengths and two widths. Two widths. So on the top, we get 20. On the bottom we get 60 plus 20 is 80, it reduces to one fourth. The ratio is one quarter. The ratio of the perimeter of the ratio of the perimeter uh, of the square to the perimeter of the rectangle is one to four. Let's do the next one. Problem number three. Problem number three. On the same page. Or is it on the same page? I'm not sure. Yes, it's on the same page. Problem number three. 
So here we have cars for sale. We are told we have cars for sale. We have cars for sale. Here are the small ones. And here are the large ones. And we are told that we have 32 small cars for sale, 23 large cars for sale on our on our lot. We are, we are selling used cars. We are the dealers, car dealers, and we have 32 small cars for sale and 23 large cars for sale. We're going to auction them. We, tomorrow we're going to have the auction. And we had the auction and found out and during the auction we found out that out of the 32 cars we managed to sell sell half of them in the auction. And out of 23 large cars we managed to sell 20 of them. Apparently large cars are very popular. We were expected, we were expecting rather, we were expecting this is the expected revenue. The book does not speak like that, the book uses a different language, but it's the same idea. We were expected $70,000 in revenue. We were hoping to earn $70,000 in revenue from the sale of the small cars. And we were expecting $150,000 from the sale of the large car. I'm explain, explaining too much. The actual revenue, the actual revenue we are told is $41,000 and hundred and twenty thousand dollars. The question simply is what is the average price for large cars that were sold? Average price of large cars sold. Not for sale, not for sale. For sale they were they were turning three large cars. But the, the number of cars that were actually sold is twenty. This is where you have to pay attention. So there were 20 cars that were sold, and how much did we get? We got $150,000. No, we did not get $150,000. That's what we were expecting. That's not what we got. The average price, that means the actual price of the car sold, actual revenue, actual revenue is $120,000. We were hoping to get $150,000 for these cars, and we were hoping to sell 23 of them, but we only sold 20, 20 cars and we managed to get $120,000 total revenue for the, for, the, for the cars that were sold, the large cars. That's it, we just have to reduce it. Divide top and bottom by 10, zero is going to go away, divide top and bottom by 2, and the answer is the average price of the large car was $6,000. Was $6,000. Let's do the next one, number 4, from the next page. Page 131. Number four, page 131, number four, we are told that we made a profit of five dollars on something that cost fifteen dollars. The merchant made a profit of five dollars on an item that cost him fifteen dollars. In other words, he sold it for twenty dollars. Question here is, what was his profit what was his profit as a percentage as a percentage of cost not not the, his profit as a percentage of the price that he sold at he sold for twenty dollars but what is the prof what was his profit as a percentage of the cost well he made a profit of five dollars on a cost of fifteen dollars if you want that in percentage but this is one third and one third in percentage is that 33 and one third percent. The answer is, is 33 and one third percent or 33.33 percent. Repeating. We'll stop here today, okay? We'll pick up tomorrow. If you look at the next problem on the same page, problem number five, the reason I'm stopping here and not finishing the page is because on the next page, on the next, the next question rather, on the same page, the reason I'm stopping here is because the next question, question number five, deals with a very important topic which are work time problems and I don't want to do it in the same video we're going to do that question and then I'm going to show you and then I'm going to tell you some some resources on the channel where you will find some more problem if you want to get better at work work time problems these are called work time problems they appear all the time on the exam we'll deal with them tomorrow okay bye now